Thank you to PCBWare for sponsoring this video. In the RC Plane hobby, 3D printing airframes has gotten pretty popular over the years. The 3D printers have gotten better and more accessible, and the fact you can pretty much make any RC airplane you want just by downloading a few STL files and pressing print. If you can just get your hands on a 3D printer and some filament, you're able to create airframes that look just as good as commercial RC aircraft, and you're able to print really funky designs some person created. Pretty crazy what technology can do nowadays. For the longest time, I didn't have much interest in trying it out, mainly because if these things crash or hit the ground a bit too hard, they essentially just turn into a pinata full of RC hardware and most of the times just glue the pieces back together isn't really an option, and you have to spend a few more hours reprinting just for it to maybe crash again. The main reasons I've been pretty interested in trying it out now is because designing the plane myself would help improve my CAD skills and also give them a challenge. And also messing around with different building techniques and materials is pretty beneficial for future projects I intend to work on, and 3D printing is definitely not an exception. But as it would turn out, this project was a lot harder than I originally planned. Another reason why I'm doing this and why the plane in question will be a nano wing is because I've been wanting to develop my own FPV autonomous micro wing, and I intend the platform to be 3D printed. That way, the design is super accurate so I can optimize performance and aerodynamics with CFD. First thing I did was hop on the computer and design a flying wing. Actually, before this, this is what I initially designed. As you can tell, I definitely learned quite a bit from the initial attempt. But yeah, I was super happy with how it turned out and it's looking pretty clean. The wing shape was inspired by the Nano Goblin, which as you might imagine is a FPV micro wing platform. I was hoping the straight wing design would give me a good slow flight performance with high lift and high efficiency. The plane will be using a 6mm carbon fiber spar for strength and to make sure all the holes would fit with the electronics and other things, I printed those out to test fit. This took a bit of time and tinkering since it was such a small plane. There's one fatal flaw with this design which you'll see later, but now it's time to print. If there's anything I know about 3D printing planes is that you need to use a filament called lightweight PLA. There are some planes you can print in standard PLA plastic, but most of the times it's too heavy. The lightweight PLA works by foaming up when it's extruded. This makes it so the part's almost half as light as standard plastic. However, this does require a few adjustments in the slide slicer settings and some tinkering but after some test prints it was looking pretty good so this is how the first print came out and it came out super well it really just doesn't feel like plastic at all like it really just feels like some sort of foam material which is really nice due to the foaming up characteristics of the filament it often leaves parts to be pretty messy this could have been solved by drying the filament which i was lazy and thought i could just clean up the parts afterwards but looking back drying the filament probably would have made the parts stronger when using less infill and wall thickness and actually, while printing the first iteration of the plane, I forgot to adjust the settings for the wall lines and infill. Really don't know how I missed this, but it really should be like one wall and less than 10% infill. So yeah, pretty dumb mistake, and I wasted quite a bit of filament because of that. For the body cap, I tried using a simple magnet latch, but it definitely was not strong enough. But it should just be enough to stay on while in the air, hopefully. Here's the motor connected to the motor mount with some M3 screws, and here goes in most electronics. Because I'm just experimenting with 3D printed planes for now, I'm not trying out any flight controllers. So this one just has a receiver and a configured delta wing gyro. And for the speed controller, I'm using this Mantis Slim 50 amp ESC. I was really shocked on how small and compact their ESCs were while still having a BEC. Even their 20 amp ESCs I used recently were the same size and weight, so they're perfect for this tiny fuselage. I printed the wing sections and began putting everything together. Was at this point, I realized the plane was getting super heavy, like around 380 grams at this point, which is not great. So even though the plane looked cool, I was not hopeful it would be able to fly well. For the Elevon hinges, I'm just using some heat shrink rubber seal that I cut into sections and that worked pretty well. But before we test out the plane, I'd like to give a quick word about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is a full service of PCB production and assembly. They're able to make super high quality PCBs down to the finest detail, perfect for your own projects or needs. My favorite part is that they also include 3D printing, CNC machining, cheap metal fabrication, and injection molding services alongside their PCB manufacturing. I've used their services to print this high quality shuttle and to CNC this landing gear carbon fiber plate. If you're interested, use the link in my description to get a free $5 coupon for your first time there. Again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now back to testing. On the first few attempts, it seemed to be pretty tail heavy. After moving the CG forward, it did seem to be better balanced, but it's pretty clear it didn't have enough power for its high wing loading. So I switched from a 5 inch to a 6 inch propeller, and this time it did have enough power. But that was when the problem of this wing became pretty evident. This thing has no yaw stability. The thing with these plank and straight wing designs is that although they are more efficient than swept wings at certain speeds, they don't have any passive yaw stability whereas swept wings have the advantage of creating more drag on one side to remain straight. Another thing is that the vertical fins on a swept wing are further behind the CG, so they are more effective. In my case, I'm just using a single tiny fin that's right behind the CG, so it's not going to do much. With all this combined, the wing would continue the drift, so I decided it would be a good idea to add some additional fins or something. 
Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm I swear to god this happens every time. The one time I don't record, it actually flies. Uh, the one big difference I did this time, which I should have done before, because the whole plane is kind of cooked. It has like tape all over it, because the part, the elevons are kind of not sticking. I did a running launch, and it, it started to fly perfectly, but then I could immediately tell it wanted to yaw to the to wherever because i'm pretty sure just the rudder and the straight wing just makes it really unstable on y'all and it's fine oh there's a lot of bugs after that i cut out two vertical fins out of some 0.8 millimeter fiberglass plate and super glued them on these probably weren't going to stay on for long but hopefully it should make a difference in the yaw stability This I would consider to be the first real flight of this plane, but I was really caught by surprise when it just nosedived straight down to the ground out of nowhere. After analyzing the crash, one control linkage was still connected, which means it wasn't a mechanical failure. This led me to believe it had something to do with the gyro or the aerodynamics. I had a feeling it crashed more towards the fact the plane had a really high wing loading and was a high aspect ratio plank wing, which means it would be more sensitive on the pitch. But when I fixed it up to try it again, I didn't get so lucky. Also, if you're wondering why the motor sounded horrible in the first clip, it was because of the unbalanced propeller. At this point, the airframe was destroyed so many times that I didn't see the point of trying to get this heavy version to fly, so I decided I would just try reprinting the parts the right way. Before reprinting the whole plane, I did a test print of a wing section with like one wall and 5% infill, which is what I've seen to be normal settings. But once it finished, to me the part was extremely fragile and the infill would collapse very easily. Since I never 3D printed a plane before, I didn't know if this should be like this, but I felt like something was going on with the filament or settings I had because it just felt way too fragile. So I decided for the next iteration of the plane to be slightly more durable than the swing section, but be way lighter than the original. The biggest change I did with the design is that rather than one small fin in the middle, I used two fins, and they're not only bigger, but they're further back towards the plane, so hopefully they can increase the yaw stability. Initially, this launch looked pretty smooth, but after two seconds, it went into some really severe pitch oscillations. At the moment, I couldn't tell if this was due to the gyro or the natural pitch stability of the aircraft, but I decided I would try reducing the throw of the servos. Still not great, but at least it stayed up in the air for more than 5 seconds. After that, I tried switching to a different propeller, and this flight made me realize using such big propellers and motors on such a tiny plane was not a good idea. Oh god. <laughs> oh my god, there's a snake right there. Right next to the broken plane. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> He's using my plane as a hideout. My broken plane. Alright, just let it chill there. <laughs> you can see on this flight, right as I power up to avoid clipping the ground, it immediately gets jolted from the torque of the motor and shoots off. I don't think this is the only reason as to why the plane is so unstable, but I definitely think it's contributing to it. Since the plane was pretty much obliterated and beyond repair, I decided to not care about durability and I just printed all the parts with one wall and 3% infill all around. When I did more research, I saw multiple people printing wing parts with like one wall and almost no infill. And they looked way more solid, while mine dented from just being held. So I knew something was wrong, but I still printed the whole plane and used a smaller, less torquey motor. The all-up weight of this thing went down to like 210 grams, which is great, but comes with the cost of it breaking when just sitting on the table. Like seriously, the elevons broke multiple times just from its own body weight pressing against the control linkages. That's why I wished I originally designed the plane to have top facing servos, but I would fix that later. On the maiden flight, I had a terrible throw and I was also too tail heavy, but luckily the plane still functioned even with the crushed nose, so I gave it another go. Super sensitive. <laughs> maybe, I, maybe I was just going too fast. Look at that. Still. Oh, wait! 
it flies super well just like when it's slow, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Oh my god, this is this is amazing. Okay, I'm a Something important to note here is that I reduced the sensitivity of the gyro and the throw of the servos, yet it still had horrible pitch control. I was glad it was actually flying, but this made me think the problem was more related to the CG affecting its stability. I was entirely sure though, since the wing would both dive down and pitch up hard. To test my theory, I simulated the wing in XFLR5, which is a CFD software for planes. I found that moving the CG further up did indeed give it more longitudinal stability, and also better efficiency. I think I'll talk more about this computer simulation and what the graphs actually mean later on, but I've been wanting to use this more as it's just really cool to analyze the models and graphs. Before just reprinting the whole plane again, I decided I would make a couple important changes. First being I moved the servos from bottom to top to prevent damage on landings, and I added a nub on the bottom of the fuselage so I could do an overhand throw. I then added more reflex or upkick the counteract nose down moments. Flying wings need these kind of airfoils since they don't have horizontal stabilizers to push the tail down. My higher aspect ratio plank wing design naturally needs more reflex as it doesn't have as strong of a lever arm. For the motor, I switched to a 1408 with a three bladed prop. I did this so I could hopefully achieve the same thrust without producing as much torque that can affect the plane on launch. It is less efficient though. Now for the airframe, I decided I would print multiple wing section tests to see what infill and combination of infill percent to wall thickness would be the strongest and lightest. I found that using quarter cubic infill on 6% with one wall gave me the lightest and strongest structure. The whole time I've been printing in gyroid infill, which is what most people recommend, but I guess since my printer settings are botched up, the gyroid infill is actually really weak and messy. It probably would have made more sense to fix the printer settings, but whatever. Alright, this is great. I've added the wing tips. And I added the hatch with the latch sort of thing. All I have left to do is add the elevons and the control forms and everything. And we're still at 225 grams. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's fast. That That's the thing. And finally, after all those changes, there were no more pitch oscillations and it flew great. Something I was realizing with this plane when flying it more is that it's extremely hard to land. This is because it just does not slow down. I tried having my final approach so far away I could barely see it, and it would just continue to glide with a relatively high speed. Oh. That was going to be a perfect landing if I landed on the freaking sidewalk. Mm. So I still need to work on the design, but the fact that it can fly now is pretty amazing. I decided to bring the wing to a bigger area to fly, and that's when I realized what this plane is truly capable of. I think in reducing that trim helps a bit. It definitely seems to be easier. Honestly, the it can fly at slow speeds, it just can't turn slow. So many kids. It's so fast. That's the thing. It, it's like I, I'm at low throttle, but it, it can it still flies pretty fast, like just like running time. <laughs> So ironically, this plane flies really well going fast, which is pretty funny because I've never really intended a RC aircraft I designed to be fast. So seeing how it handled and how stable it was at those high speeds were pretty shocking. To be fair, it can fly slow, but definitely prefers to fly fast. <laughs> oh, that is sick. Oh my god. Dang. It's just... The wing does because I don't think it's weight because it's 250 grams, which is pretty light. And compared to other sub 250 gram wings, like their wings are very tiny compared to this. So, like, I, I don't think weight is the reason why it's just better at flying faster. Maybe something with the wing. 
To be fair, it can fly slow, but it definitely prefers to fly fast. Another thing is that the plane glides forever. This doesn't feel like it wants to go slow. Like, cruising it can go slow, but just like... First of all, like, it goes very fast, and then its glide ratio is like super long. It's like, it, it seems to have like a very efficient wing, which I mean makes sense. Oh, maybe, maybe it'd be better to design a plane with like a less efficient wing, because then it wouldn't want to like cut through the air as well. But then that, that sacrifices the efficiency. It's still going so fast. Another thing to mention is that I was using a 850 milliamp 3 cell, and it was like 50% charged because I forgot to charge it. Yet I was still able to fly this thing for like almost 20 minutes, which is pretty insane. Even when ripping loops and high speed passes, it still lasted for quite a while. And although I say this thing prefers to fly fast, it can cruise at almost no throttle, and I think that's because the plane just seems very efficient and cuts through the air very well. The only problem is that it just can't turn at slow speed, so I kind of want to see if I can fix that later. All right, so I'm actually pretty surprised on how well this thing flew. Oh, it's some tall, tall bushes. It's just a extremely efficient plane. So it does not slow down. That's the biggest problem. When I'm trying to land, it will not slow down. It just keeps on going. And then, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just the wing design because I want this to be a little bit easier to slow down and stuff, but it's really stable at high speeds. It's like, this plane is meant to fly fast can do all sorts of flips and stuff but in terms of like landing and flying in smaller places not that well it's a pretty fun thing to just go high speed which is don't i don't usually do you guys can let me know if if you are watching to this point if you want the files for this plane there are some things i need to adjust because like the infill and things are like random i do want to improve my print quality and stuff to see if i can fix so i can print with less infill because this the infill is pretty high compared to what people suggest for lightweight filament um so you guys if you guys want to print this plane um i might release the files and fix them so it's a little better but just be mind this isn't going to be the most friendly <laughs> design there might be some things and adjustments you're going to have to do but i mean it's a pretty good high speed micro wing platform so yeah